Bizarre Inc. I'm Gonna Get You. Released in 1992, it peaked at number three in the UK charts. Let's go. It's always funny. You can tell the producer, the the DJ, a mile off in these videos. They've got an amazingly attractive black guy messing with what looks like a blown up condom. You've got Erica Badu <laughs> and some like like princess of Ethiopia looking frankly stunning. The blonde girl is fit. The goths fit. They're all beautiful. There's a bouncer character, and then they just weirdly cut to two guys who are little going. Because they asked to be in their own video. 100% the fucking producers. Bet you anything. Dean Meredith and Mark Archer formed Bizarre Inc. in 1989. However, Archer left the group. He went on to become part of Alternate, among many other successful projects. Andrew Meacham and Carl Turner joined Meredith to form the Bizarre Inc. trio that would go on to conquer the charts. I'm Gonna Get You was their second single from their second album and the follow-up to the massive hit, Playing With Knives. I'm Gonna Get You was held off the UK number one spot by Boys To Men's End Of The Road and Tasmin Archer's Sleeping Satellite, which made me think of other tracks that should have been but didn't make number one and the tracks responsible for stopping them to do so. So I've come up with a top three, mate. Let's go through these. There's only three. It's not, this is not the definitive three. It's just my little top three that I've put three together, right? Let's chat about these. In at number one, Wonderwall by Oasis was held off really? the top spot, held off the top spot by Robson and Jerome's double A side of I Believe and Up on the Roof. Get Fucked. <laughs> number two, Blur, song two, aptly only reached number two, kept 97? off the top spot. What year? By, 97? Yeah, I think so. By R. Kelly's I Believe I Can Fly. He pipped it to the number one spot. I think his. I can't three... see. That can get fucked less because. As much as he's an absolute punchline, R. Kelly, these days, you yeah. know, because he's a rapey old dodgy fucker. <clears throat> but back in the days, mate, R. Kelly was dropping some absolute tunes. Not that it Bombs. was song two, but... Number three on my list of top three, Eminem, My Name Is, which we've covered on the Eminem special, showing the sample, was Not kept yet. off the top Not spot... Yet. By the offsprings, pretty fly for a white guy. Bum, ba dum, bum, bum, ba dum, ba I don't give a fuck. In offsprings, pretty fly for a white guy, the offspring guys actually sample the intro 
from a Def Leppard song called Rock of Ages. It's sort of a substitute for a four count and it goes something like Gunter Glieben, Glaschen Globen. And I've prepared this video for you, mate. First up, we're going to see the Def Leppard song that they sample. Then we're going to see the very start of Pretty Fly for a White Guy. Gunter Glieben, Glaschen Globen. All right. <laughs> Mate, there's absolutely loads of those, like songs that you think should have been number one but weren't. Should we do a Patreon on it next week or something? Or the week after when you're oh, back from holiday? 100%. Should, should 100%. we just do a Patreon on tracks that should have been number one and the tracks that fucking stop them from being number one? If you love the show and you want more of our chat, then support the show on Patreon. The link's in the show notes below. Dan, tell the people what they get when they sign up. A second-hand air conditioning unit that will be available <laughs> come Friday when it's pissing it down. <laughs> I'll tell you what you get, access to the one hour long show that we produce every week that's released before the short of YouTube edit. You can listen to those shows as a podcast and you can watch more made, made for Patreon exclusive episodes. I'm Felix Leiter, international DJ and producer. My name's Dan Nightingale from the Have A Word podcast. And together we're going to explore the samples that feature in tracks you love in a show that we like to call... Show Me The Sample. Okay, mate, we're talking about vocal samples today. First, we're heading back to Adolphe Dupree and his track, Yo DJ, Pump This Party! It was released in 1991, and I know pretty much fuck all else about this Dupree or the track. I've done some Google searches, but I couldn't turn up much. So if you're watching and you know anything about Adolf Dupree and this track, drop it in the comments below. But let's check out where they got this vocal sample from. Do you want to gain ground? We'll make the beat pound. Make her body hit straight as the bass slaps her face. You move, jack that body. Yo, DJ, pump this party. Yo, DJ, go, DJ. Yo, DJ, pump this party. I really Oh, they clipped out that. the best bit there, didn't they? I mean, I know, I know that's biased because I know which bit they clipped out. But uh, Adolf, really? I mean, 1991. Good spelt, God. Spelt differently, but yeah, strong, strong first name. I don't no, know if it... but when they're in the, when they're in the maternity <laughs> ward and they're like, they're like, <laughs> and the midwife's like, so what are you thinking of calling him? A Adolf, really? Oh no, don't worry, it's spelt with a PH, so that'll be fine. Fucking brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> On to one of the most prominent voices in dance music history, Jocelyn Brown, also known as Jocelyn Shaw. Born in North Carolina, and as we record this episode, 70 years young. Her aunt, Barbara Roy, was a singer in a group called Ecstasy, Passion and Pain, whose track Touch and Go was sampled by JX for his track Son of a Gun. But back to Jocelyn. She began singing at an early age by joining gospel choirs in Brooklyn Classic. and later Classic. in Washington, D.C. She further developed her career by singing on studio recordings for artists like Chic and the Sal Sol Orchestra before releasing solo tracks like Somebody Else's Guy, which she co wrote. In 1985, she released a single, Love's Gonna Get You, which went on to become heavily sampled in dance music, featuring in tracks like Moby Go and Snap the Power. So let's take a listen to the samples used Jeez, by Bazaar Inc. I've cut this up so you can hear two different different parts of the track and you will hear the two bits that were used by Bazaar Inc. <laughs> When you do that, it's so good. They had that vocal sample resung by British singer 
Angie Brown. No relation to Jocelyn. Born in Brixton in 1963, she was once in a band with the Rolling Stones, Ronnie Wood and Keith Richards called The Dirty Strangers and performed on the track Return of the Mac by Mark Morrison. What is the story about Mark Morrison and Adam again? Who did? What did Adam think? He didn't that- know he was black. <laughs> He didn't know he was black through the whole of his childhood. He was an adult man. He'd heard the song hundreds of times, liked the song, sung along with the song, and then was fucking gobsmacked when he was like, that guy's black. Before I get your opinion on this week's samples, if you're still watching and you want more, then help us out. Support the show on Patreon. We produce a one-hour show every week where we interact with Patreons, watch extra clips, tell stories, basically give you a much better experience. You can go and listen to them as podcasts. Go down, click the link below and subscribe and get all the behind the scenes going on. Dan, give me your thoughts on Bizarre Inc. Tell me what you think of the track. Want you, if you forgot it, it came rushing back to you. Tell me what you think of the samples. Hit me with your thoughts on this week's episode. It's a belter, isn't it? It's a belter. I don't know much about the the song. I've I think everyone in this country that's in and around our age will be able to sing along to that tune. Um, I wouldn't have been able to tell you who it was by with, and I would have been able to sing along to the whole thing. But as you played those samples back to me, I was like, oh my god, I love it when they pull out all the good bits. And my favorite thing about those samples is you're like, oh, it sounds weird. Oh, it sounds shit. And then there's the bit that the producer and the DJs heard and gone, ah, that's fucking great, I'm having that. And they've left dross around it. And I think uh, those samples were a great example of that. Nice one. He's been Dan Nightingale. He's been Felix Leiter. See ya.